so much for joining for this talk, which is an introduction to easy and enjoyable plant-based eating. This isn't just for vegans or non-vegans or those who are veg curious. It's pretty much for anyone who wants to find out how to have an optimal plant-based diet that gives you the energy you need, gets rid of fatigue, gives you that glow, but also where you can eat your favorite foods. Okay? Even if you are not planning on being fully plant-based, so you're not planning on being vegan, it doesn't matter. If you get a load of plant-based foods into your diet, you are going to feel the benefits. And I'm Vanessa Sermon. I'm a plant-based health coach, and I founded Energize and Cry Plant-Based to do exactly what I just talked about, help people get rid of their fatigue, get rid of their bloating, be a healthy weight that they choose, all with the most delicious plant-based food and no missing out. Um, so, who here uh, is already vegan? Most. So this isn't a shaving exercise, that was not a shaving exercise. <laughs> um, it, it's to, for me to find out who I'm talking to. Um, who is just curious about plant-based food or um, veganism? Yeah, okay, some people. <laughs> quite a, you know, well along the journey when it comes to uh, plant-based or, or vegan eating, but wants a bit more information, thank you. Okay, so everyone, and this is the thing, whether you are vegan or plant-based or getting there, or anyone, no matter what their diet, wants some information, I think, on getting some more energy. So I'd love to see a show of hands. Who wants more energy in their life to do the things that they love? and have the life they deserve. Most people, some people don't want that energy, I've just seen one or two, which is fine. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna cover today, I'm gonna just go over some of the biggest myths about plant-based eating. Um, and you know, if you're vegan, you probably know the answers to these, but some of them you, you also may not, okay? I'm gonna go over what some of the benefits are to my energy levels, my gut health, and my overall health because we're not taught this stuff in school. We are not taught how to have the healthiest, most optimal diet. We're taught to go on fads. We're taught to starve ourselves if we want to be healthy or lose weight. None of this is true, and it's very damaging to both our physical and our mental health. And a lot of people don't even know what gut health is. It gets thrown around a lot, mostly to sell you a product. So let's actually break down what gut health actually is and what you can start doing today, even in your own supermarket, to get better gut health. I'm going to go over the flavorful and delicious dishes for different cultures. So being plant-based, it does not mean it will not fit with my favorite dishes or with my culture. Uh, and I'll go over some lovely flavors and dishes that you can have a think about. And some more tips on how you can get started with easy plant-based eating. This applies whether you are already vegan or not. Being vegan doesn't necessarily mean you've got optimal health and energy. So these are things that everyone can get some help with. Uh, some of you will already know, and also we're here in a, in a fair of lovely, amazing food, but I'm not about to tell you to eat salad all day. Absolutely not. This is all about filling, nutritious, and incredible food that also includes your favorite treats. I love cake, by the way. Um, does, anyone, does anyone else love cake and treats and wants to build them into their life? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell you to stop eating that either, just, just in case you're about to walk out. Okay, some more pictures of nice food. This is, this is what you do if you're plant-based or vegan. You take a lot of pictures of your food, um, exactly for things like this. So um, there's some Caribbean food in there. There's delicious big breakfasts. Um, there's brownies. There's delicious lunch boxes. You can have whatever you want plant-based. If there are any questions, actually, during my talk, I will leave some time for questions at the end, uh, but just, just stick your hand up if there's a clarification that, that you want to make, all right? Um, why listen to me? Okay, so I specialize in helping people get rid of their fatigue, get rid of their bloating, and be a healthy weight with the most delicious plant-based food, whether you want to be fully plant-based, or not. No dieting, no fads, no missing out. You should be full, you should be energized, and you should have good mental health when you have good physical health. So anti all that diet industry stuff where you're starving and binging, that is not a fun cycle for anyone to be in. 
Just a little bit about my background. Um, I've been featured on the likes of Sky News, BBC and LBC as an authority on plant-based and healthy eating. Um, I co-founded a successful recipe website called The Vegan Lada. Some of the pictures are from that. Um, and now my ex-business partner runs that. So I'm all about the most delicious and flavorful food. Food should be a big enjoyment in our life. It should not be a point of stress or worry or a fight. A fight with ourselves, that usually is. <laughs> um, I studied biological anthropology at Cambridge University. Um, and I was also in the workplace change area, um, helping people with well-being and changing their businesses and their lives. Um, and just to reassure you, I do not have a private chef at home. I am also very busy. Um, sometimes, you know, like everyone who, who experiences a bit of stress in their busy lives, sometimes doesn't have time to cook. This all comes up. I also, just like everyone else, I'm le leading that busy, sometimes stressful life, try and reduce the stress as much as possible. But I want to reassure you it is possible to have a varied, delicious, and healthy diet, even when you're in that busy lifestyle. That's even more important. You can't do the things you want to do if your energy levels are not where you want them to be. Okay. Um, I love a good before and after picture, so you're going to get a couple in this presentation. Um, I was not always like this. Uh, I've been plant-based for about eight years. When I was 24, I was bloated, I had acne, I was going to the gym too much, I was exhausting myself, I wasn't happy. Um, it, it was not a fun time. Um, I still look, I don't say, I'm not saying I look bad, I'm saying that 11 years later, I look younger now. Um, my skin is pretty much consistently clear. Um, I don't get bloated, I don't have to go to the gym all the time, that was exhausting and not very fun, um, and I have a really, really good relationship with food. So I'm saying change is possible, but it's also possible to turn back the clock um, as well. So just a few of uh, my star clients, um, Alison, Cara and Kevin, so some of the things they've said about working with me, they're ensuring they're doing the best for their health and their well-being. Um, having me actually analyze their food every day. No one else will do this to you, and you probably wouldn't want them to do this to you at the dinner table to say, actually a reason you might be getting bloated is because, or a reason you may not be full from the meal you're having is because there's not enough fiber or protein or enough variety. So I hold people's hand through this. You are not taught in school how to have a healthy diet. It's okay if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and it, it's great. These are a mix of people who are plant-based but also not plant-based and are doing it mostly. They have more energy, so Kevin got completely convinced of the benefits of plant-based eating by coming and working with me as well. Um, told you you were going to get another before and after picture. Um, this is the tray. Uh, she's also a grandmother. Absolutely crazy. Um, and she worked with me for three months and she became more energetic clear skin, her inflammation went down. This is something that's really important. The more plants, the more fiber, the more whole foods we get into our diet, the more we are gonna reduce our inflammation, reduce our bloating, and get the energy we want. So I'll talk a bit about whole foods later and what that is. Um, as a vegan, you can spend a lot of time not eating whole foods. It's fine to eat not whole foods sometimes. I also love eating treats and I'm gonna be eating a lot of stuff here as well, okay? Um, and she also lost weight in a way when she didn't have to be watching the scales every day. I think that's really, really important. When we eat healthily in a way that truly fills us up and gives us the energy we need, we don't have to be watching our weight. That's a boring thing to watch. Let's watch something else instead. I also help workplaces take action with their health. There are so many small steps, and I'm gonna go over some of these, that we can start taking to help our health today. It could literally be adding an extra piece of fruit to your breakfast. It could be swapping your broccoli for kale to build more variety into your diet. And I'm gonna talk about why variety is key for staying full, for your gut health, and having the energy you really, really need. So there's a couple examples from a, a consultancy and also doing a, um, a cooking class for Michigan State University as well. Okay, 
I have talked a little bit about why I want to talk about the health side, but I'm going to say it again as well and why this is important for everyone. Some people, whether they're already vegan or plant-based or whether they're trying to go vegan or plant-based, it's really important you know how to stay full and satisfied. If we don't know how to do that, we are not really going to enjoy our, uh, we're not going to enjoy good health, we're not going to enjoy the, the food that we really, really want. It's important we know what balanced eating looks like. Again, you are not taught this in school, so I'm going to go over a little bit. What should I be making sure is on my plate so I can still have the things I love, but I'm getting full, I feel good, I feel energized. How you can optimize your gut health and your energy levels. Again, this is really important. If we are going to eat a certain way, and for everyone that's different reasons, it could be health, it could be animals, it could be the environment. Let's make sure we're looking after our gut and energy levels, no matter what your reason is for wanting to eat more plant-based food. Um, and like I said, and I'll keep saying this, don't feel bad. You were not taught this stuff in school, and in fact, the media literally feeds us all sorts of ridiculous things about health and dieting, which is very confusing for everyone. Uh, and sometimes it means people find it difficult to optimize their gut health uh, or their energy. Some of the biggest myths with plant-based eating. First one, I have to go vegan. Some people might disagree with that, but <laughs> you don't. To get the benefits of plant-based eating, you do not have to go fully vegan. Do what you can, start where you are. You might end up going fully vegan, who knows? But start where you are, start making some changes and you will get the benefits for your health. And if you are doing it for other reasons, be that animals or environment, you start making some changes, you're having an impact. You know, to have an impact doesn't mean you either do 100% or 0%. Do what you can. And guilt is a pretty useless emotion. So do what you can. You do not have to go fully vegan to get these benefits. Um, some people think when they're eating plant-based food that they won't be full. I'll be honest, before I went plant-based, I refused to go plant-based because I was like, well, I'm not going to be full and I don't want to walk around hungry. Um, I am more full than I ever was on a plant-based diet. Everyone talks a lot about protein, and yes, protein is very, very, very important. What is much more filling than protein is fiber. Okay, there is no fiber in meat, fish, dairy, or eggs. And I'm going to talk even more about fiber because it's key for your gut health as well. Uh, but you will be very, very full if you eat in a balanced, varied way. Uh, it won't fit with my culture. So I'm going to be going over some really great plant-based dishes that fit with a few of the, the cultural cuisines. And actually, the basis of most food um, is pretty much plant-based. It's all about flavors, it's all about sharing, it's all about celebration. Um, it's actually got very little to do with meat, fish, dairy, or eggs. Uh, it will be expensive. Um, I think everyone could do with tips on saving a little bit of money. Um, it depends where you buy things, it depends if you're, it depends if you're buying a particular packaged product. Whole foods are very, very inexpensive. So we can be healthy and plant-based without spending huge amounts of money as well. Um, it will be bland. Uh, now, if you have been eating some of this food for a while, you'll know that's absolutely not true. But again, sometimes people think, well, in order for me to be healthy, I just have to sit and eat a load of vegetables. Absolutely not true. Um, there are so many incredible flavors that you get in plant-based food. You might need to learn how to add these. But another great thing to know is actually herbs and spices are excellent for our guts and excellent for our health. So actually, the more herbs and spices you're using, the more you are going to help your gut. So I think everyone's probably heard of the benefits of turmeric. Yeah, yeah, everyone's heard of that. That is just one of the many herbs and spices. And you don't even have to learn, oh, well, this spice is going to do this. This one's going to do that. Take that stress out of your head and just get a variety of herbs and spices into your diet. Don't worry about all the science or the exact vitamins and anything. It's not always that helpful. If you love that stuff, though, learn it. But focus on variety in my diet. Another myth that you'll be deficient in vitamins and minerals. Um, absolutely not. Yes, there are some vitamins that it might be helpful to take. That is also because our soil is quite degraded now. So what our parents or grandparents got from vegetables, 
we're not going to get quite the same number of vitamins and minerals from fruit and vegetables now. So it's never a bad idea to take a vitamin and mineral, but if you are plant-based, you're actually going to be getting more vitamins and minerals than on a not plant-based diet. Okay. Why is this great for health? When you are healthy, plant-based, you're eating a variety of plant foods, it is going to help you reduce your fatigue. And I'm going to talk a bit more about gut health as well and why that is. You're going to potentially live longer. I can't make promises, obviously. I don't know how well you look after yourself, but you're going to live longer and you're going to have a better quality of life as well. We don't want to hit retirement and not have the energy to do all the things that we really love. And we want that energy now. Um, it's been it's known to prevent disease okay and um, again that is not going to help our energy levels if we're constantly trying to fight off all sorts of lifestyle conditions that are preventable um, it is much easier to maintain a healthy weight and not be worrying about dieting or fads or anything like that if we are eating a balanced varied plant-based diet so for a great gut health we need a big variety and a large amount of good gut bacteria. That population of gut bacteria in our gut is called the microbiome. And you might have heard these words thrown around, and I want to make sure people actually understand what they mean, because sometimes it's just talked about and there's, there's not enough information around it. Okay. We have to feed the good gut bacteria. If we do not feed the good gut bacteria in our gut, they're going to die, okay? So good bacteria are called probiotics. Has everyone heard of probiotics? Has anyone ever bought probiotics? Some. That's often what you're, what you're sold, okay? Right, I might have already said it, but who knows what your good gut bacteria eat? Fiber, exactly, they eat fiber, and that is not talked about enough. It's probiotics, probiotics, take probiotics. If we don't feed them, they die, they eat fiber. And fiber comes from, what? yes, exactly. Fiber comes from plants, so if we're gonna feed our good gut bacteria, we've gotta feed them plants. There is no fiber in dairy, meat, fish, or eggs, okay? And because we need to maintain that variety, the diversity of our microbiome, we need to have a diversity of fiber, okay? So again, yes, it can be nice to know what vitamins are in different things, but that's sometimes a lot of information. So eat a diversity and range of whole foods, plant foods, that's gonna get your diversity of fiber to feed your good gut bacteria, okay? comes from plants, like I said. To clarify, probiotics are the good gut bacteria themselves. Prebiotics are what they eat. So that fiber is prebiotic. You eat the fiber, it feeds the good gut bacteria, okay? Cool. A bit about the impact of good and poor gut health, okay? It is so, so, so important. So if we have good gut health, we are going to have great hormonal balance. This is very, very important, no matter who you are, but you might especially feel it if you are someone who menstruates and got a 28 day cycle. Uh, you're gonna especially feel it if you are perimenopausal or menopausal. Um, and even if you're not going through those things, if your hormones are not balanced, you are gonna feel it and see it in some way. Many of our hormones are made in the gut, including things like serotonin, the happy hormone. Our good gut bacteria digests food. So if we don't have that good diversity of microbiome, we're not gonna digest food properly. This is where you're gonna get things like bloating, IBS, problems with the gut. I won't ask people to put their hands up for different problems, okay? But I'm pretty sure everyone has experienced something at some point in their life with a not so great gut. And I think we'll probably all agree it's not fun, it's not pleasant, okay? Um, what else? We also get good mental health when our gut is, is good. And um, that's not just because of what's happening with our hormones, but it's not very easy to focus if we're dealing with a painful gut. That's not gonna help us. Um, it helps our immunity, so we're not gonna get sick as much. It's gonna help our focus. If everything's in balance, our focus is gonna be better. We are gonna do better at life. 
It's also going to contribute to maintaining a healthy weight. Uh, very interestingly, so if we have bad bacteria in our gut, some of those eat sugar. So there's lots of reasons we can crave foods. Uh, and again, I think everyone, has anyone ever craved a food or a sugar retreat at some point? Anyone who's not putting their hands up is lying, and that's fine. Um, but our bad gut bacteria can actually crave sugar because it's what it feeds off. So sometimes they can be calling out, you know, sometimes it can be because you haven't eaten a balanced meal. There can be lots of reasons we crave sugar, but one of them can be a poor, uh, poor gut health, okay? So you're not helping yourself when our gut's not good. It's making it even harder uh, in terms of eating a healthy and balanced diet. Um, and we can also prevent various conditions by having a healthy gut. So on the flip side of that, poor gut health looks like not having great hormonal balance, it's not digesting our food properly, we're going to get bloating. Bloating again, I'm pretty sure everyone has experienced that at some point. It is not fun and it's especially not fun if you're experiencing it regularly and all the time. We might get weight gain as well from a poor gut. As I was saying, those, those bacteria can shout out, give me the sugar. We get lack of focus, we can have poor immunity, poor mental health and depression, that's very linked to our gut health as well. Poor skin, if you've got skin problems, that's very linked to your gut. Cravings, like I said, and just to reassure you, you don't always sit, you're not gonna go from one straight to the other. It's still a scale. Your gut health can start to change in the space of one meal. You start feeding your gut great fiber, so you have a really great whole food, plant-based meal. You're already starting to feed that good gut bacteria and you're starting to change your microbiome. This is not, oh goodness, this will take me a year to make these changes. So you start with one meal, okay? And it's the scale. Okay, a little bit about variety and why we need it. We're told, eat the rainbow, we're told we should have variety, but sometimes it's not clear why we need this. So, who has ever had that feeling of being really bored of the food they eat and going, if someone serves me that again, this was me when I went to Greece and I said, if I have any more lettuce and hummus, I'm going to be sick because that's all they have for me at that, uh, many years ago. But who's had that experience of, I, I, I can't look at that anymore. Even I used to like that food and I don't because I've had it so much. Yeah? That's actually a biological response. It's not anyone being a diva going, I want something different. It's a biological response, okay? Our body will make us feel bored if we lack variety. It's actually our body saying, go and forage for something different. Go and forage for new food. I need new fiber to feed my microbiome. I need different nutrients, vitamins and minerals for my body to function. So it is your body actually telling you to do the right thing for yourself, okay? So that is why we need variety. Like I said, it can be simple, it can be, right, I've eaten a lot of sweet potato, I'm gonna roast some butternut squash instead. It doesn't have to be master chef. That would be nice, but it doesn't have to be. I wanna talk a bit about balanced eating. So I think this is really important. People really struggle with this. What am I actually meant to have on my plate to stay energized and full? Protein, it's so obvious sometimes, vegans always, you know, have to mention the protein side. You need protein, building blocks of your body, it's gonna help you stay full. That's things like your tofu and your beans. Nuts also have protein as well. Every vegetable has protein, everything has protein in, but you wanna have some of the stuff that's got more protein in, like your beans, your tofu, your tempeh, your edamame. Uh, more sources of that as well, I could talk for hours. You want to make sure you're having some complex carbohydrates. I mention this because some diets also get people to really, really reduce their carbs and then it's not sustainable and then their body struggles and then they go back to their old ways. Complex carbohydrates are things like your sweet potato, your whole grain rice, your buckwheat. It's that sort of stuff. You want to have that that's going to sustain you and give you energy. You want to have some whole fats. So that's things like your avocados, your nuts, your olives, um, less refined fats. So that's gonna be things like your oils and your vegan butters. I'm not saying don't have that. I'm gonna have some vegan baklava when this talk finishes and that's definitely not whole fats. 
but as a general thing, you want to be thinking about having whole foods. And lots of fruits and vegetables. A really obvious thing when I look at people's plates, I do have this joke, people pay me to tell them what their parents told them when they were five, which is please eat more fruits and vegetables, okay? Look at your plate, challenge yourself, could I have a bigger portion of fruit and vegetable on there? The answer is usually yes, okay? Uh, and a bit of a reminder of some of the good sources of plant protein, tofu, whole grains, beans and lentils, even mushrooms and nuts and seeds, okay? So making sure you're getting a good range of all these things uh, and getting a good balance on your plate. Some other things about making plant-based eating really easy and enjoyable is not to restrict yourselves. I'm very, very anti-restriction. Restriction means something different for everyone. So if you are vegan, of course, you are not gonna be eating meat, fish, dairy, and eggs, okay? I'm also vegan, so I do not eat those things. But the way I don't restrict myself is, yeah, I am gonna eat some vegan cake. I am gonna eat my favorite foods. I am gonna go out and eat chips. Not all the time, because I love having my healthy bases and foundation of healthy plant-based whole foods that keeps me energized, but I'm gonna go and eat all my favorite things whenever I want, okay? Um, so like I said, it'll look different for everyone. For people who are just starting or don't want to be fully plant-based, they might say, well, actually, I'm not gonna completely cut out animal products, but I would like to be mostly plant-based, and that's my choice, and that's fine. So don't restrict yourself. When we restrict ourselves, we think about all the stuff we can't have instead of focusing on what we can have. And when we think we can't have something, usually we fail on that healthy eating path or whatever it is. Build in your favorite food and flavors, like I said. Build that in. Go to the restaurants you want to go to. Have the treats that you want. Yes, there are, might be healthier ways of making those, which you can discover along the journey, but this is not about having a boring, punishing diet. It's the opposite. It's how can I eat these wonderful foods and flavors, be energized and full and happy. It's not a diet and it's not short term. If something you're doing doesn't feel sustainable, then it probably isn't. If you are not feeling full, if it is not feeling good, if it is taking five hours a day in the kitchen, it's not sustainable. So we need to have food that is gonna sustain us for the rest of our life and start learning how to eat in a balanced way that you can do whether you are at work, whether you're traveling, whether you've got family. It's gonna look slightly different for everyone, but it needs to be sustainable. And taking baby steps as well. This is whether you are vegan, plant-based, if you wanna take baby steps towards becoming more healthy, just start with adding more vegetables to your plate, for example. And I'm going to give you some more tips on things you can do to start. Okay, some of the best dishes across cuisines and cultures. Um, I love food and eating out so much, so this is a bit that's always very exciting. If you want these recipes after as well, just come and speak to me. I'll also give you an option to join my free Facebook community where I post a lot of these recipes. All of these dishes are about the flavors, the herbs and spices, the textures. It's also important to get a variety of textures into your diet. Any diet or fad that is getting you to drink shakes all day is not good. We need to chew, we need to chew to stimulate our gut. We were not designed to be having Nutribullets. I love a blender, by the way, but it, we were certainly not designed to be blending up all our food. Um, Cultural dishes are also about sharing. Like I said, this is, they're not about meat and fish, they're about flavors, textures, sharing, abundance. They're about enjoyment and deliciousness. So that picture is of some lentil koftas uh, in some coconut curry sauce. They are made completely with whole foods, very high protein, absolutely delicious. Um, and that is, that is a dish that comes sort of more Middle Eastern. Uh, it doesn't matter, you do not have to have those animal products to enjoy those flavors. So I'll just go through a few cuisines, just to give you some inspiration. Um, Italian, if you usually make some sort of spaghetti bolognese or meatballs, try using lentils instead of meat. Even if you usually perhaps use, and look, I'm still supportive of the processed vegan food, but if you wanna go that bit healthier, go for lentils instead of the vegan mints. Try something different. You can make your own vegan parmesan, or you can buy it, uh, or you can sprinkle some extra nutritional yeast onto your food. 
It tastes kind of cheesy and nutty. Or you could order some wonderful vegan pizza from places like Parezza, but even places like Domino's, Pizza Express, they all do vegan pizza. So if you love pizza, keep it in pizza, it's there for you. Caribbean is one of my favorite and also where some of my roots are from. So again, that's all about the flavor. Sometimes we hear a lot about jerk chicken and rice and peas. The only ingredient you're changing in that is chicken. Everything else is the same. So I've done a jerk jackfruit with rice and peas, but you can do jerk cauliflower, jerk tofu with an easy marinade. Again, I can give you the recipe for that. Even the national dish of Jamaica, ackee and saltfish, you can make with tofu instead. And it will taste just as wonderful. Christmas, this is appropriate. Christmas is coming up. There is no need to scrimp at Christmas either. Christmas can be fantastic. There's, you can have tempeh stuffing balls, you can have pies. Uh, I haven't put a nut roast in here because I think everyone talks about nut roast a bit too much when it comes to plant-based. You can have a nice big Christmas wreath full of all sorts of wonderful things. Christmas cake, brownies, anything you want. And obviously go and explore the festival for lovely Christmas presents and chocolates that are plant-based. It is affordable, whole foods are very affordable, okay? Fruit, vegetables, beans, lentils, all those things, very, very affordable, but I like to give some extra tips as well. So you have more money for spending on the back lover and the pizza later, okay? Um, so, even in your supermarket or online, grab plain tofu, fruits, veggies, beans, lentils, like I said, especially things like plain tofu in the supermarket, it's very, very affordable, and all the tofu in the supermarket tends to be organic. When it comes to soy, you do want to eat that organic, because most of the soy grown on the planet is grown to feed to animals that are livestock, okay? So that is not good quality soy. You want to go for the organic stuff. Shop around as well. So sometimes you might walk into somewhere like Holland and Barrett and they've got a sale. Other times they may not be as cheap for certain things as going online. Shop around, have a little look, or even come on my Facebook group and ask me where the cheapest place is to get chia seeds. It's absolutely fine, I'll come and answer that. Buy seasonal as much as possible. This is also better for your health and your gut to buy seasonal. Generally, if you go to the supermarket, the stuff that is the cheapest and nearest the front and more abundant is seasonal. Everyone's probably seen a packet of strawberries in winter where there's about three strawberries in the packet and it's about fiver. It's not seasonal, okay? So you'll usually be able to tell when something's seasonal without worrying what is in season, okay? Or if you go to a farmer's market, everything's seasonal because they're literally bringing you what they are growing. Bulk cook as much as possible, okay? So especially if things are on offer, grab lots of it. Don't buy, ideally, unless you've got zero space, don't buy a little packet of nuts. Buy a bigger packet, keep it in a Tupperware, that is gonna be better on your pocket than buying lots of packets of nuts. And it takes up more time doing that. But do your bulk cooking as well. Um, pack up your lunch, even when you're serving your dinner up. Pack up a Tupperware, unless you wanna eat a lunch out, obviously, but that just makes it better on your pocket to pack up your lunch as well. What else can you start doing now to help you on this journey? Just a reminder of some easy ways to use vegetables. So this is a problem I see across everyone, whether they are plant-based, vegan, trying to do anyone. I rarely see enough people put enough vegetables on their plate, and it's fine. We're not taught to do this enough, but keep challenging yourself on that. And if you think, I'm sick of salad, or I don't know what to do with these veggies, or I don't have time. Chop them up, chop them on a, a roasting tin, maybe rub some garlic in, chop your herbs and spices on a bit of salt and pepper, and stick them in the oven, and go and do whatever it is you need to do in your house, okay? Um, roast some cauliflower, it's not a great picture, you can't see it very clearly, but you know, roast some cauliflower with some garlic, even if you've got Brussels sprouts. So if anyone doesn't like Brussels sprouts, when you roast them, covered in garlic and some salt and pepper, you might find you actually like Brussels sprouts now. And again, it's an easy way of getting that into your diet. Even chuck some raisins and some walnuts on there to be roasted as well. Just do anything you can to make it special. And grab, who's got a spice mix in the back of that cupboard that they're like, 
haven't used that. Yeah, yeah, that's that spice mix in the back. Get it out, get it out. Put it on the cauliflower and roast it. Make some simple swaps. If you find, actually, who finds they keep buying the same thing? They've got their go-to vegetables. Yeah, yeah. Challenge yourself within whatever shop or supermarket you go to. It might just involve moving your eyes a bit to the right. Pick up a different vegetable. It could be a cabbage or a kale instead of your broccoli. It could even be purple sprouting broccoli instead of broccoli. Pick up something different. You are going to immediately start to help your gut health with that one simple change. Continue making your favorite dishes. Okay, you can use, you know, even if you've got your favorite dish and that's how you make it, just put the lentils in the bolognese instead of the meat or whatever else you used. Use different types of beans and lentils because they've got different types of fiber, they've got different textures. We need to stimulate these, you have these different textures to stimulate our mouths as well, which make us enjoy the food. If you've got a favorite curry recipe, use chickpeas instead of the chicken, or if you're already vegan, use a different bean or lentil, okay, to mix up what's in there. Or find a different curry recipe with some different spices. It can be as simple as that. And just as I've said before, please just add more vegetables to your plate. And if on your breakfast you're only chucking on a handful of blueberries, put on the blueberries, plus a chopped banana, and maybe chop some apple on as well. Just more of that fruit and veg. Okay. When you go out, pick a plant-based option. Maybe research it a little bit more, but places like Ethiopian food, there's actually an Ethiopian school here. Um, and if you are also thinking, look, I want to eat out, but I want something a bit healthier tonight than, say, a pizza. Nothing wrong with having a pizza, but sometimes you might say, I want to eat out, but can we have a, a slightly healthier version tonight? Ethiopia would be a good one to go for. Lots of fibre from those beans, lots of vegetables, and many Ethiopian places are completely vegan or do fantastic vegan food. Um, and then Southeast Asian restaurants generally do amazing plant-based food. There's usually lots of tofu and it's wonderfully filled. These ones are also a bit healthier. So again, even if you're already having plant-based cheese or yogurt, now there are some wonderful cheese companies, but there are some that are healthier than others. And something like Nush, for example, is a cream cheese you get it in the supermarkets. It's made with whole fats. It's not made with oils. It is literally fermented nuts. So much better for your guts, much better for you overall, much more whole foods. Um, Coconut Collaborative is a great yogurt as well. Um, try and go for the yogurts that don't have added sugar in. Yeah, that's also just, you know, sometimes we get what we can and that is absolutely fine. But if you can start getting used to having a look at these and saying, I'm going to find a yogurt that doesn't have sugar in, that's going to be better for your health. Try a simple plant-based recipe. Or if you're already making vegan cakes, try something different. This particular recipe, still a treat, but it's a healthier version. It uses peanut butter instead of oil. It uses coconut palm sugar. It's chocolate and raspberry peanut butter blondies. It's so good. That is in my free Facebook group, How To Go Plant Based. I will put another QR code up in a moment for you to come into that group, but I'll make sure you get that recipe as well, but that is in my group. And they're so, so delicious. They're so good. So good. Um, get some essentials as well. Make your life easy. So if you need to have a clear out of your cupboard to make things easier to find, and I have to do cupboard audits sometimes because it gets a bit packed, just make your life easy by making sure you've stocked up with herbs and spices. You've got things like soy sauce, which is often in a lot of these recipes, and also great for what we call an umami taste, a savory taste, which is very important. We have to think a bit more about flavor sometimes when we're doing plant-based. And nutritional yeast. I mean, I'm sure if, if you've been vegan for a while, you probably have this in, in mountain abundance in your cupboard, but this is very useful for adding that sort of cheesy, nutty flavor to dishes, okay? And this is fortified with B12. And very importantly, explore and have fun. Whether you are trying to get more healthy as a vegan or whether you're exploring more plant-based food, Food is meant to be fun, enjoyable, and delicious. So everyone's 
different for a start. Everyone likes different things. Everyone has different favorite foods, different times of cooking, and that is absolutely fine. Explore what you love. You know, the thing that I really love to explore sometimes is cake. So I will go and explore that, whether that's cooking it or whether that is going and eating it. I love exploring restaurants and different cultural dishes. Uh, I love making my old meat favorites completely plant-based, so I'm making my own vegan chicken from Satan. Explore what you love. And don't expect yourself to know everything. Like I said, whether you're trying to be healthy or whether you're trying to go plant-based or mostly plant-based, we don't. Everything's a journey, and if something doesn't work one day, it, it really doesn't matter. The police aren't going to come around. It is totally, totally fine. Just enjoy it, okay? There's so much amazing food to enjoy. Please do that. What else you can do as well? So if you want free tips, hints, advice, recipes, please join my free Facebook group. It's called How To Go Plant Based. This is for anyone, it's very inclusive. It's just about enjoying great, healthy, plant-based food and some not so healthy plant-based food sometimes as well. Um, when you join, I'll make sure you get sent my free guide on how to have a balanced plant-based diet where you're full and energized and glowing. I'll make sure you get sent that. So if you fill in the membership questions when you get to that point, I'll make sure you get my guide. And you're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm Vanessa Starman, or on Instagram, Energize and Thrive Plant-Based. Please just DM me. If you've got a question, you're struggling, or you want to explore upping your health and optimizing your health, just send me a message and we can have a chat. And if you are in any workplace that you think could do with a talk or some help on just really increasing the performance of the people there and just introducing them to some of these tips and plant-based food to help their health, uh, all the environment, all the animals. Um, again, please just drop me a DM or come and speak to me um, and we'll see if we can also make something like that happen. And like I said, yeah, contact me directly. That takes you to my WhatsApp or I am also here in person so you can come and actually just speak to me. Um, I'm very, very open to questions, very open to exploration. Uh, I want everyone to have the, the health the gut health and the energy that they really, really deserve while eating the most fantastic plant-based food. That's why there's a plate of brownies there as well, to so say you definitely still get to eat those. Any questions? Yeah? Why whole foods? Why whole foods? Yeah, absolutely. So whole foods are generally much better for our health and our guts. That's where you're going to be getting the whole fiber that's going to be feeding our gut. It's better for our blood sugar levels. So when we are eating fruit, for example, okay, fruit has sugar in. It has fructose in. That sugar is absolutely fine for many reasons. One reason it's fine for you is you're eating it with a load of fiber. It's not going to spike your blood sugar levels. It's not going to make you crave anything. Fruit is completely, completely wonderful to eat in abundance. But that is one reason, yes, we should be having whole foods. Yeah, so the question was, can I have too many carbohydrates? And um, sometimes when people are going plant-based, they feel like they're having loads of potatoes, loads of rice, loads of all of sorts of things like that. What I say is have everything in balance. So those foods are really good for you, but do you have on your plate some really great marinated tofu for protein? Do you have extra vegetables? Do you have a bit of avocado or olives for your whole fats? That's more the issue when people pile up a plate of a load of pasta and then say, pasta's not good for you or pasta makes you put on weight. It's not, you know, and nothing in balance, that's out of balance is gonna be good for us. So making sure that that maybe fills, I don't really like giving percentages of plates because everything rolls into each other, but making sure, you know, a third to half of your plate, say, is full of roast vegetables and salads, that you've got, you know, a big handful of uh, marinated tofu or lots of beans, and then maybe you're having a baked sweet potato with that. And if you're still hungry and you've had a balanced meal, eat some more of the balanced meal. It's okay if you're still hungry after dinner and you've eaten balanced food, you might just need to go and eat more. You know, don't let anyone say, oh, that's the size of your plate and end off. 
weighing out food or things like that is generally really bad for mental health in my opinion. If you're hungry and you're eating a truly balanced and healthy diet, listen to your body. I might just need a bit more food and that is okay. And like I said, please just contact me. I'm going to hang around for a bit after. I've got a table just over there. Um, and, you know, please join my, my fun Facebook group for some lovely recipes and advice. And you can ask me anything on that as well. Thank you so much.